Please subscribe to our YouTube channel General Hospital Anna stops by Jack's room at the hospital and asks what was so important that he needed to see her right away. Jack says he's being sent back to Pentonville and he wanted to give her a heads up. Kate's walks in and wonders what the two of them could possibly have to discuss. He reveals the guard is instructed to tell him when Jack has a visitor and asks Anna why she's here. Anna says doesn't know and asks Jack why he summoned her. Jack says he just wanted to say goodbye. Kate's leaves them to enjoy their double talk, and Anna asks Jack what is going on. Jack tells her that he wanted to give her the heads up that Kate's thinks she's the secret head of Pikeman. He recalls his conversation with Kate's, who suggested he and Anna were working together and staged his bust. Anna steps out and makes calls and delays Jack's transfer for a few hours so they can talk. She returns to Jack and asks why he thinks the FBI is after her. He says it's Kate's who is after her, not the FBI, and given how quickly he found her here, he is probably tailing her. Anna says she's not hiding anything and isn't worried. He says she should be, as Kate's is a true believer, he thinks God and the law are on his side, and anything he does is justified. Anna says she knows people like that, and they can be dangerous, but so can too much cynicism. Anna asks Jack if he's ever believed in anything at all. She wonders if she ever knew the real Jack Brennan. She says it was no surprise he was made director. But how does founding Pikeman figure into this? Did he sell out? Did he abandon his principles? Did he have any to begin with? He says he believes in democracy and food for the hungry, but at the end of the day, he had to pay his bills. He again warns her that Kate thinks she is a cop by day and the Pikeman mastermind by night. Anna says it's not lost on her that Kate's is trying to bring her down for something he did. Before she leaves, she has one last question. She says she's the only witness that can tie him to the op that started all this, and asks if he would have killed her if she hadn't arrested him first. He seems to struggle, and only says, I've never been good at hypotheticals. She exits. Spinelli is working on a laptop in a metro courtroom and has been up all night. Sam arrives and he explains he came here to work because Georgie is having a sleepover with Violet. Sam asks if he's made any progress. He says he got through the FBI's firewall but is still no closer to getting the information they need. Spinelli has been monitoring Kate's movements through the hotel cameras and his badge may get them access to the files they need. They go through videos and he takes a swim every morning and has a bag with everything he doesn't want to leave in his hotel room and they deduce his badge is in it. They think that's their opportunity. Sam heads up to the pool and finds Kate's getting out and drying off. She spots his bag, strolls by him and trips, causing Kate's to catch her. She apologizes and says these are new shoes, and she pretends her ankle is hurting. He carries her over to a lounge chair, and she apologizes for being a bother. Jack calls for a bucket of ice, and as he's helping Sam, Spinelli, dressed as a cabin boy, swipes his key card from his pack. Sam keeps Kate's talking and tells him he's such a gentleman. He suggests she rest for 20 minutes or more, and she says she'd get pretty bored sitting here by herself. He asks if she's married, and she says she's divorced, single and has two kids. Kate's introduces himself, and she tells him she's Samantha, but people call her Sam. He brings up her statement about her divorce, and she says her ex wasn't who she thought he was. She sees he has no ring on his finger, and Kate says he's divorced too. She says people often let you down, and her ex let everyone believe he died and left her and her son distraught. Then he just turned up alive. He asks if she is at least glad that he is alive. Sam admits she is, but is conflicted too. Kate says his ex-wife passed, and sometimes he wonders what his life would be if she hadn't. Sam says she sometimes she thinks about her ex when things here good. And now, they barely talk. Meanwhile, Spinelli uses his phone and scans Kate's FBI ID. Spinelli slyly returns his credentials, and Sam tells Kate she thinks her ankle is better. She says it was nice getting to know him, and asks if he'll be in town for a while. He doesn't know but hopes he sees her around. Chase ignores a call from Liz, as he and Brooke Lynn have just arrived to confront Finn at his place. They knock on his door, but he doesn't answer. They open the door, which is unlocked, and find the apartment a mess and an empty bottle of booze on the table. 
Chase calls out to Finn, and he comes out and says this is a nice surprise and asks what brings them by. Chase says he forgot to lock his door, and Finn says he had a lot going on last night. Finn asks if they've talked to Liz, but they haven't. Finn says they ended things and it was his fault. Chase asks what happened. Finn dodges the question and thinks he should clean the place up before Violet gets home from Maxie's. Brooklyn uses Violet as a seed and she and Chase tell them that they are moving in with the Quartermains for a while, and with all the kids there, they thought maybe Violet would like to come hang with them. They try and sell it as a summer camp, but Finn knows what they are doing, and they aren't taking his daughter from him. Brooklyn returns to the Quartermains, and Lois can see something is upsetting her. She tells her it's Finn, he and Chase should be supporting one another right now, but they're being drawn apart. She says Chase needs Finn and he's nowhere to be found. Lois asks what she's talking about, did Finn leave town? Brooke Lynn says Finn is in a full-blown alcoholic spiral. Brooke Lynn just prays that Chase will get through to his brother. Brooke Lynn knows Finn is a grown man and he either will have to get into recovery or pay the consequences for his disease. She says Violet is just a little kid and she and Chase will do everything they can to keep her safe, even from her own father. She also knows Chase is beating himself up for not seeing through Finn's lies earlier, and she feels this is going to be a long ordeal for all of them. Lois tells her it's not supposed to be this way, she is supposed to be happy and on her honeymoon, instead she's dealing with problems that could hurt an entire family. Brooke Lynn says Florence isn't going anywhere. She and Chase are together now, they are each other's person, so that includes being scared or worried for him. At home Liz leaves a message with Chase to call her back as they need to talk. Aiden asks what is going on, as Jake keeps quiet. Liz tells them that she and Finn broke up. Aiden notes they broke up before and got back together, but Jake says that's not happening this time. Liz says Finn can't be in their lives, and he's not handling Gregory's death very well. Aiden thought Finn and Violet were going to move in someday. Jake doesn't care if he ever sees Finn again, but asks, what about Violet? She says Violet is still their cousin, and that won't change. Aiden says obviously there is something Jake knows, and he doesn't. Liz explains his brother saw Finn coming out of a bar drunk and with a woman. Aiden thinks Jake is mistaken, and there is no bar near the cineplex. Liz tells Jake he never explained how he saw Finn coming out of a bar. Jake tries to come up with an excuse, but she tells him that she'll deal with what he was up to last night later. She says he was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be, and he could have not told her about Finn to avoid trouble. But he did tell her, and she thanks him. She also says she's really glad he called his dad for help. Jake says he only called him for backup for her and asks if Finn gave her a hard time. She says he didn't, and having Jason show up helped. She says it also meant a lot to him that he called. Jake says he did for her. He asks if this means he's forgiven for lying about the movies, and she says, not a chance. On the next General Hospital, Sonny faces Christina and says that she tells him she wants him to leave and never come back then he will. Molly tells TJ she's been keeping something from him. At the pool, Cody tells Sasha that she's going to have to trust him. Gio tells Joss that the Quartermains are going to be a piece of cake. Laura asks Alexis if she is saying Heather could go free. Carly asks Jason if it was a one-time thing or if could it happen again. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, General Hospital Update, and stay with us. Chase tells Brooke Lynn that he needs to talk to his brother alone and that he'll catch up with her later. She leaves and Finn tells his brother to leave too, but Chase refuses. Chase tells his brother that he needs help and confronts him with the booze. He also says he saw him doing shots at the memorial too, and given his hangover, it appears he had quite a night. He tells his brother if he doesn't see this as a problem, then he has a bigger problem than he thought. Finn says he's not an alcoholic, but Chase says he's a drug addict, and they both lead to the same result. Finn screams at Chase that he doesn't know what's going on inside him, he doesn't know the pressure he's under. Chase tells him to talk to him, to tell him. Finn says he wouldn't get it or understand it, calling him the golden boy. Chase says he's been on so many calls like this, a drunk tearing his family apart. He tells Finn to look around at the mess he's made of his life. He cries he just lost his dad and can't take losing his brother too. Finn says he's sorry he's become a problem for him, 
but he's a grown man and can take care of himself. Chase tells Finn he can trash his life, but Violet should have to watch him self-destruct. Finn says Violet is the only good thing in his life and he won't let him and Brooke Lynn steal her from him. He screams at Finn to get the hell out of his life and go. Chase walks out.